Hello, I just quickly wanted to go through a couple examples from your homework because I didn't go over any examples in the video. Um, I'm not going to come up with uh, exact numbers, but I'll, I'll run you through how you set up the a uh, bunch of the questions. Uh, so to start off with, I'll do number three. We'll skip one and two because those are just gravitation for reference to show you the similarity between the electric force and the gravitational force. Um, so this guy, just basically plug it into your formula, uh, your force formula. Remember your force formula is the electric force equals your um, Coulomb's constant, nine times 10 to the nine times the charge of object one times charge of object two, all over the distance between them squared. This has to be in Coulombs, this has to be Coulombs, this has to be in meters. So that's kind of the trick to this question. Uh, so we'll do our nine times 10 to the nine. Uh, for our k, our q1 will be 4 times 10 to the minus 6, because that's what this little micro symbol means, uh, coulombs, times 3 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, coulombs, all over, um, we've got 2 in centimeters, so that's 2 hundredths of a meter, 0 0.02 squared. Um, so it should be, I can almost get you a number here, um, cause this will end up being a four. So the fours will cancel, uh, you got nine times three. So it'll be, uh, 2.7 times 10 to the, uh, nine minus 12, um, plus four. So like 27, I guess like 27 newtons ballpark. Uh, again, run it through your calculator. That'll be better in my head, but uh, should be ballpark of 27. Though I, I could certainly be off by or 10 or two or screw something else up. Uh, anyway, that's how you do it though. Um, two points of equal charge produce an electric force in each other of 3.4 times 10 to the minus two when placed um, basically 10 centimeters apart, 0.1 meters. Uh, what's the charge in each point? Uh, again, we've got the same formula, uh, but each charge is the same. They're equal charge. So for this guy, we can do a little trick. We could say, hey, our electric force equals K times Q squared, because it's the same charge. So we don't have to treat them differently, uh, divided by R squared. Um, and so we can rearrange this to solve for Q. Um, so I would kick this guy up, know my algebra trick if everything's multiplying, it's just moving things diagonally across the equal sign. Um, so I would say uh, your Fe times R squared all over K equals Q squared. Um, and so if I want to get rid of that squared, I can just square root it. All right, uh, so let's put it in. So we'd have our Q would equal the square root of 3.4 times 10 to the minus two newtons, minus two, um, times our R squared, which is 0 0.1 squared, and then all over nine times 10 to the nine. So whatever that happens to be, that's how you solve for Q. Big trick, hey, they're equal charges. So it looks like you got two variables, Q1, Q2, but they're really the same. So it ends up being Q squared. And uh, careful with that, think it through. Uh, some people end up getting tripped up by that and think it's like two Q, but you're multiplying Q by Q. So it's Q squared, not two times Q. All right, let's talk number five. How far apart are two point charges of two times 10 to the minus six and four times 10 to the minus six if they produce an electric force in each other of 5.6 times 10 to the minus one newtons? Um, exactly the same sort of question, except you're solving for R. Um, so again, you start with your same formula, KQ1, Q2, all over R squared. Uh, and so, I would just kick up the R here and kick down the force and we would end up with R squared equals K Q1 Q2 all over the electric force. 
Uh, we can get rid of that squared if we square root both sides. We end up with that. My kids are screaming for me. Quick pause, and then I'll come back. And we're back. Um, yeah, so just plug in your numbers, plug in your calculator, you're done. These next couple are a bit different. Um, they'll take some thinking. So, so give it a second. Don't expect it to come immediately. Uh, so we've got two point charged objects producing electric force on them of 6.2 times 10 to the minus 2. What's the electric force if the distance between them increases to three times its original value? So keep in mind your force is equal to kq1 q2 over r squared. So if you just change r, if you just change this guy, but leave everything else the same, I'm going to say after. So all this junk is exactly the same, except it's got this extra, it's three times as big, or three times as far apart. Uh, that three gets squared. This ends up being one ninth what it was before. Whatever you do down here, um, that's gonna whatever that will get squared as it applies to the effect. Uh, so if it's three times as far away, you'll have one ninth the force. If it's two times as far away, you'll have uh, one fourth the force. If it's five times as far away, you'll have one twenty fifth the force. If it's six times away, you'll have one thirty sixth the force. If it's seven times away, it'll be one forty ninth the force, and so on. Uh, which if you think through it like this, this whatever you do to it gets squared and then you can bring that out. And so this is just what it was originally. Um, so think along those lines. Uh, and you can do a similar uh, thing here. Oh, by the way, um, at this point it's one ninth whatever it was before. So this is what it was before. So take this number and divide it by nine and you're done. Um, uh, for this guy, we've, we're saying what happens if we uh, triple the charge on both objects and then double the distances between them. So like before, when it was 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3, it was just boring old k, q, 1, q, 2, all over uh, r squared. But now, now we've gone new, I don't know, whatever. The new force, uh, K stayed the same, but Q1 is three times what it was before. Q2 is three times what it was before. And the distance between them is twice as far away. So that gets squared. Uh, we can bring this out. Nine, or three times three is nine. Up top, two squared is four underneath. And then we're left with all the original bits. So it's basically exactly the same as it was before, times nine over four. Nine for the three times three, four for the two squared. Uh, so you can just take this sucker and multiply it by nine fourths and you're done. Um, you can do other tricks, uh, cause again, uh, force is a vector. So here we have three point charged objects placed in the line as shown above. Calculate the magnitude of the net electric force on the center charge caused by the other two charges. Since they're like the same distance away, um, the way I like to do this is I imagine this three times 10 to the minus six charge um, is composed of a two times 10 to the six minus six charge and a one times 10 to the minus six charge. It's three, so I can say it's built made of a two uh, plus one charge. Uh, if you think about it, if we're looking at just the forces on the center one due to the outer two, assuming they're fixed in place, um, with this, this guy is entirely symmetrical with this guy. If we did K, Q1, Q2 between these two, um, we'd get some force and it'd be equal and opposite to the 
this guy would be trying to push this guy right. Um, this guy would be trying to push this guy left uh, with exactly the same amount of force. If we did K this times this over that squared, um, they'd all cancel out. So really, I can ignore two of my three coulombs on this side because it'll cancel with this guy and just be left with this. Um, alternatively, I could do K Q1 Q2 over R squared twice. Um, one to find the right force on this guy because of this and one to find the left force on this guy because of this and then do kind of a big minus small, but I can cancel stuff out initially right here by imagining this 3 times 10 to the minus 6 1 is composed of a 2 and a 1 added together and uh, being intentional about that saying that this will cancel with that. Uh, so the way I would do this is just k 9 times 10 to the 9 times uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2 times 10 to the minus 6. The 1 is because of the leftover bit that's not cancelled of the 3. The 2 times 10 to the minus 6 is the middle guy, which is uh, the one we're interested in the forces on it. And the distance between uh, this guy and that guy is 0 0.4. And that gets squared. And so that would be your force. That's it. Um, just do this guy quick, um, even though I've gone over, but you can watch this or not, uh, depending on how you're finding the questions. Um, so this guy, we got kind of a triangle and forces are a vector. So we've got to treat them like a vector. Uh, so um, this will be the same force, but one's going to try and push it uh, we're looking for the force on this guy because the other two, uh, it's symmetrical, they're kind of symmetrical, they're the same distance. Oh, I guess they're not the same charge. Uh, so we can build this into a triangle. Uh, our, let's say F1, the, the force between these two. Or maybe let's call it Fx because it's uh, a rightward force. Uh, we'll say that's, we'll go straight to 9 times 10 to the 9 times 3 times 10 to the minus 6 times 4 times 10 to the minus 6 all over 0 0.6 squared. So that's our right word for us. So you can go solve for that in your calculator. Um, that's all great. Um, interestingly enough, it'll, it'll work out to be a nice little number. Um, three, 0.3 or something. It'll be like 0.3 newtons. Yeah. You should solve it for yourself so I don't screw you up. Uh, so that's our X word force. We got our FX here. So whatever you solve for it there. And then this guy will be trying to push it up. Let's call that guy Fy between these two. And that's going to equal 9 times 10 to the 9 for k uh, times 4 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, for this guy and for this guy. So I'm just going to square it because same thing as multiplying it by itself. And then divide that by the distance squared. And this one works out even better. This will be like one. This is like one. Uh, anyway, do the math uh, so I'm not screwing you up. But yeah, should work out pretty nice in point one or something. I don't know. All right, uh, and then you get your triangle, and then you'll have to do Pythagoras with whatever you find these guys to be to find the magnitude of the net electric force because you got a right force and an up force. And then you got to do Pythagoras to find the net force. All right, uh, let's leave that for now. Uh, if you've watched this whole video, congratulations. That's a long haul. Uh, sorry about the length. Uh, and happy studying.